Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel and for watching my videos and for supporting me. Thank you very much. I have four items on today's news clips. The first two I'm not going to show you. I'm just going to give you the headline. Uh, the first article is one on Substack called Why, Why We Can Save Free Speech. And it's a discussion about the resistance to censorship that's growing around the world. The second one is a story about Irish farmers being pressured to kill cows to meet climate global warming goals. That one, <laughs> uh, I'm, that blows my mind. Um, let's just say, for example, that you have 2 million cows in Ireland and you're going to kill 1% uh, of them. No, 10% of them, 200,000. That's what the goal is. If you reduce the population of cows producing milk by 10%, what happens to the price of milk? Pretty sure it goes up. So, this plan would reduce the income of the farmers and increase the expenses of everyone in Ireland that drinks milk. Sounds like a great plan to me. The third article that I have is Microsoft AI recall feature records everything, secures far less. This one I have to read to you because <laughs> this one I have to read to you because it's disturbing to put it mildly. Developing an AI-powered threat to security, privacy, and identity is certainly a choice, but it's one that Microsoft was willing to make this week at, at its Build Developer Conference. On Monday, the computing giant unveiled a new line of PCs that integrate artificial intelligence technology to promise faster speeds, enhanced productivity, and a powerful data collection and search tool that screenshots a device's activity, including password entry, every few seconds. This is Recall, a much advertised feature within what Microsoft is calling its Copilot Plus PCs, a reference to the AI Assistant and Companion, which the company released in late 2023. With Recall on the new Copilot Plus PCs, users no longer need to manage and remember their own browsing and chat activity. Instead, by regularly taking and storing screenshots of a user's activity, the Copilot PCs can comb through that visual data to deliver answers to natural language questions such as find the site with the white sneakers and blue pantsuit with a sequin lace from Abueleta. Uh, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong, I wonder? You have a computer that's collecting data on everything that you do, every second that you do it, and someone accuses you of a crime. So, the government, the police, take your computer away, and <laughs> now they have access to everything that you've done, and it's easily searchable. Gee, I can't think of one single negative downside of that. Can you? Man, I'm telling you. The, the last article I have for you is one called How One Man Convinced 200 Ku Klux Klan Members to Give Up Their Robes. And it's an interesting story about a black man. He's a blues musician. But um, for the past 30 years... He has spent time befriending members of the Ku Klux Klan. And when he gets, when the friendship blossoms and he gets them to give up their misguided beliefs about black people, he gets them to give them, give him their robes. 
and he now has a collection of over 200 of them. <laughs> so, this is a very interesting article. I, I would I would think you would be interested in reading it. Um, that was... <laughs> uh, well, let me read you a little bit of it, okay? I was playing music. It was my first time playing in this particular bar called the Silver Dollar Lounge. And this white gentleman approached me and says, I really enjoy y'all's music. I thanked him, shook his hand, and he says, You know, this is the first time I've ever heard a black man play piano like Jerry Lee Lewis. I was kind of surprised that he did not know the origin of that kind of music, and I said, Well, where do you think Jerry Lee Lewis learned how to play that kind of style? He's like, Well, I don't know. I said, He learned it from the same place I did. Black, blues, and boogie-woogie piano players. That's what that rockabilly, rock and roll style came from. He says, oh, no, no, Jerry Lee in invented that. I ain't never heard no black man except you to play like that. So I'm thinking this guy's never heard Fats Domino or Little Richard. And then he says, you know, this first time I've ever sat down and had a drink with a black man. Well, now I'm getting curious. I'm trying to figure out now how is it that in my 25 years on the face of this earth that I have sat down literally with thousands of white people, had a beverage, a meal, a conversation, or anything else, and this guy is 15, 20 years older than me, and he's never sat down with a black guy before and had a drink. I said, how is that? Why? At first, he didn't answer me, and he had a friend sitting next to him, and he elbowed him. He said, tell him, tell him, tell him. And he finally said, I'm a member of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> I just blurt out laughing because I really did not believe him. I thought he was pulling my leg. As I was laughing, he pulled out his wallet, flipped through his credit cards and pictures, and produced his clan card and handed it to me. Immediately, I stopped laughing. I recognized the logo on there, the clan symbol, and I realized this was for real. This guy wasn't joking, and now I'm wondering, why am I sitting by a clansman? That was the beginning of a 25-year journey of befriending clansmen and having them give him their robes when they give up clan. It's, it makes me wonder what could we do through honest persuasion as opposed to berating people and ridiculing them for their beliefs. I mean, you know, I have uh, nothing, <laughs> nothing at all in common with a Klansman. I can't even imagine talking to one, and yet here's a black man talking to them, making them into friends, and then having them donate their robes to him. Amazing. What a world we live in, huh? Well, I pray for you that you will have an abundant life, that you will live a long time, that you'll be healthy, that God will keep you safe from harm, and that you will be born again if you're not already. I pray that God will do the same thing for every single person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.